family members. It is the proper transition uh, by the signing. It's happening in the president's room inside the U.S. Capitol. It does look like the boardroom from The Apprentice, but it's not. It's the uh, Capitol, and it is, there you see House Speaker Paul Ryan and the Vice President uh, over his shoulder, Martha. You know, the former president said, <laughs> he started saying, we, we've been milking this goodbye, and he was talking for a while there at, at Joint Base Andrews. He said, I'm going to be very brief, uh, but, but you know, I think he may still be going on at this point. And as you point out, this is really some housekeeping that takes place here, uh, ceremonial, the signing of some security documents as the president takes office. Uh, and you can see him surrounded by the family. Those are Don Jr.'s children uh, and Ivanka's children to to his right, watching Grandpa beginning to sign some of these these documents as he takes over. Well, you know, sure, we can hear. Yeah, let's see what we can hear, absolutely. <laughs> Uh, Betsy, public education. 
All right, so just in case anybody wants to know, these aren't the executive orders um, on immigration or health care or anything else. And there you see a room of bipartisan lawmakers, including Nancy Pelosi, that is House Speaker Ryan. This is a bill he signed, uh, the proclamation of the day of patriotism. And then these are the formal nominations, one by one, for his cabinet. And I think there was some passing of the pens he was using, and Nancy Pelosi, the House Minority Leader, said, I probably shouldn't get one before Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell. So he's getting used to the protocol uh, in Washington and how things are done, and you know this is his first experience probably of you know handing off the pens as he signs bills. So he passed one to Nancy Pelosi right off the bat. You know she was sort of right in his sight line. He looked up, she was smiling at him. He gave her, she uh, sort of touched up and said maybe maybe she go to the leader. So uh, Donald Trump gets his you know sort of some indoctrination into the ways of Washington and this little ceremony that we're watching unfold here right now. You can see Paul Ryan smiling uh, over his shoulder and the room is crowded with family members. It's nice to see some little kids uh, back in the White House. We saw the Obama children, really, when they came in, and it's always sort of, I think, refreshing. I think Americans love to see children in the White House. Although I would say this, if I'm 10, is pretty boring. <laughs> <laughs> like Barron. But Paul Ryan's looking over his shoulder. He's hoping to see a lot of that signing going on uh, early in this term, right, Chris? Yes, absolutely. And as we pointed out before, uh, the flip side of what Barack Obama did in his second term, uh, when he said, I've got a pen and a phone, and he used the pen to sign a lot of executive actions on immigration and climate change and a variety of other uh, at matters uh, that can all be undone with the, the stroke of a pen, and I don't think that's what you're seeing today, right now, but you're certainly going to see some of that starting on Monday, the first full day of business in the Oval Office, and, and that'll, that'll be an easy, quick way for Donald Trump to keep some campaign promises uh, and to chalk up some victories. I, I, I think he's going to be able to dismantle some parts of Obamacare by executive order as well. A lot of the legislation is going to be much more complicated and time-consuming, but this will be a way to begin to pay off his, his campaign promises to the American People. We should point out this is also the Mattis waiver bill. This is uh, the bill that allows General James Mattis uh, to officially become his defense secretary. Um, the law was that you couldn't be in a civilian uh, cabinet post uh, until after seven years leaving the military. Uh, this bill, Britt, uh, changes that. It does, and and I might add, uh, Brett, that when he gets down to the business of undoing executive orders done by President Obama, no one should underestimate the effect of that, because some of these regulations were quite sweeping that he put into place. A lot of businesses and other entities thought that they were a real drag on their ability to operate. And I, a lot of businessmen I've talked to say that as important as any tax reforms that he does and uh, as important as lowering the, the tax rates on business and the rest of it, getting some of these executive orders undone will have at least as much of an effect. So these are things, as we suggest here, that, that he can do in the early going uh, that will make a difference. You think about that. We'll see. That, that is definitely his focus. I mean, he's a businessman, and business is going to come first for him. Regulations, cutting uh, corporate taxes, those are things that are near and dear to his heart. Uh, President Obama, on his first day, wanted to close Guantanamo Bay. That was one of the first things that he spoke about. That dream did not come true for him, uh, and he was still pushing for it on his way out the door. Yes, and he, was, and he was unable to do that because Congress wouldn't go along. The Congress that many of the uh, critics of the Republican leadership said gave the president everything he wanted. Well, that was the one big thing that he never got. And as we speak here today, Martha, as you suggest, the Guantanamo remains open, and who knows how much busier it may become under this new president. Speaking of regulations, Dana, um, in that speech today, the inaugural address, President Obama, uh, President Trump, rather, said, uh, for too long, we've been held back by burdensome regulations on our energy industry. President Trump is committed uh, to eliminating uh, some of those environmental regulations. And to that point, the climate change section of the White House website website has just been taken down. <laughs> might be getting a, uh, a redo, something tells me. By the way, Brett, I might note that the new POTUS uh, 
Twitter account is up. So far, no tweets, but nearly 4 million followers. Meantime, the old one, the Donald J. Trump website, remains up, still has its 20 million followers. We're told so that we will they await will... the first presidential tweet. We're told that they will transfer over, is what we're being told. No, that'll be good for a lot of the followers, I'm sure. We will be the first to bring you the first presidential tweet. <laughs> yeah. 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 I bet you it won't be long. I think um, that there's something to be said about the environmental and conservation uh, policies of this president. You haven't heard a lot about that, but it really does get to the heart of when we're talking about rural America in particular. For example, uh, the Obama administration had been very aggressive with one rule in particular called Waters of the United States. The acronym is WOTUS. And if you talk to 